Hello and welcome to your quick news, current event, and stimulus update. As you can see, I'm back in my regular studio, no longer locked in quarantine at my house. Thanks for all your well wishes uh, during, during that time. In the news, today we're going to take a look at which stimulus programs are set to expire very soon, like in a few weeks. Uh, Bernie Sanders has spoken up about all things stimulus. Trump may be looking to veto something. We're gonna talk more about that later. And we've got some peer reviewed studies on COVID vaccines. And of course, I'm gonna end off this update with some rapid fire current events, just things in the news that I thought were interesting and wanted to share. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe as we dive right into the news. For many, the day after Christmas is going to bring an end to programs that millions of Americans are relying on. Pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, pandemic unemployment assistance, paid leave protection, the renter eviction moratorium, the home foreclosure moratorium, student loan deferment, and penalty-free retirement withdrawal are all set to end very, very soon. That's a long list of things ending this month. For many people who lost their jobs and for independent contractors who could not find work after the shutdowns, these unemployment programs were essential for keeping their heads above water. The national average weekly payment was nearly $320 across the nation. Having families and citizens lose these boosts is going to lead to even more economic issues, including evictions and less money going to businesses and more people getting sick. It's just this avalanche of bad things that are gonna happen. Although there was a rent moratorium out from the CDC, many landlords kind of found ways to circumvent this order and evicted tenants anyways. I mean, we can't really blame the landlords per se either because they also need to make money and feed their families. Landlords aren't all bad. A study from Princeton University's eviction lab found that over 73,000 eviction notices have been filed and that over 10,000 deaths have been linked to eviction moratorium lifts. I think the only solution here is Sure, ban evictions, but also help out the landlords so that way you're not putting one group of people in a struggle and just helping one side of the equation. You have to help both sides of the equation. Home foreclosure and eviction moratoriums have been renewed on a monthly basis as of recent, and at this point they're set to run through January 31st. Student loan payments are following suit with an extension to January 31st as well. The Families First Coronavirus Response Act required certain employers to give paid time off to employees who were sick or taking care of someone who is sick. The act provided them up to 10 days paid sick time and up to $511 a week. Finally, the CARES Act allowed penalty-free early withdrawals from 401k and IRA retirement accounts up to $1,000, and this will end very soon as well. All these programs are keeping tens of millions of Americans afloat, and this all needs to be addressed this week. It's that much of a time crunch. Senator Bernie Sanders is not excited about the Democrats backing the latest $908 billion proposal. Sanders and, well, just about everyone else is confused why they did not back the $1.8 trillion bill that was almost set to pass before the election. Now, Bernie feels the Republicans have gotten almost everything they wanted, and the one major relief that almost everyone agreed on months ago is being left out. And that is, of course, direct stimulus checks to the people. I have to say, I've, I have to agree that this is such an odd situation. $1.8 trillion seemed to be like the perfect stimulus package size when it was proposed. It, it covered everything that was needed to be covered, didn't go too crazy in you know the, the extra things that are in these bills, and it seemed like a happy medium. So it, yeah, it, does, it just doesn't make sense. In fact, so many representatives are upset about the exclusion of the $1,200 direct stimulus checks in this $908, $908 billion bill that they've been urging the president to veto the bill unless the checks are included within it. So I'm not really sure why the direct stimulus is just not already included. As I, as I said before, it's one of the areas that is most agreed on. On top of the urges to veto a stimulus relief package, Trump is threatening to veto the spending bill as well. It appears that the president is making these threats based on two discrepancies within the bill. First, the bill requires the Pentagon to rename Confederate named military bases and property in three years. And second, there is a section that does not include a repeal to online platforms liability protections for content posted by third parties while allowing them to make good faith content moderation efforts. 
Why either of these measures would be in a government budget bill is completely beyond me. This is why nothing can ever be agreed on because there's all these secondary things added to a bill. Just make a bill on the thing that needs to be covered, make a separate bill on the other things that you need to be that need to be voted on. Moving on. The UK has begun administering Pfizer vaccines this week, and with that comes a new peer-to-peer -peer study that has the medical community pretty excited. Oxford University and AstraZeneca became the first to have its phase three clinical trial results published in a peer-reviewed journal. The Lancet Medical Journal has confirmed the initial findings that the shots have an average effectiveness of 70.4%. However, this is not all good news for AstraZeneca. The review also found that subjects who were given accidentally lower doses experienced a higher protection rate of almost 90%. And of course, this, both of these figures are different than the 95% figure that we've been hearing recently. These findings prompted stocks to drop just a little bit as further testing is needed to clear up the final results and effectiveness. What's most important here is the fact that these vaccines are beginning their peer reviews, meaning that we're going to have a lot more clear information as opposed to just, you know, what the mainstream news wants to tell us. I mean, we all know how the media works, but it takes weeding through the most popular articles to get the real stuff. So that's why you should subscribe here and let me do the digging for you. After all, it's free. Now let's wrap up this Wednesday with some rapid fire current events. After more than a decade long dispute, China and Nepal have finally agreed on the exact height of Mount Everest. Officials from both countries announced yesterday that the mountain stands at 8,848.86 meters or 29,031 feet tall. While the world waits for the COVID vaccines to roll out, the stock market has settled down and has shown some minor losses. The swelling of COVID case numbers are hindering the growth here, as well as some uncertainty about the vaccines like I talked about earlier. So it looks like the roller coaster might be slowing down and giving you the perfect opportunity to jump in with four free stocks after a $100 deposit with Weeble using the link below and you'll help out my channel along the way. It's a pretty awesome deal and this is the, the best deal that they've given yet, so it's worth a shot if you ask me. Moving on, the Pfizer vaccine has received a positive review from the FDA and they are set to meet tomorrow to approve or disapprove emergency use of that vaccine here in the US. If you're interested in learning more about the science behind the vaccine, make sure you tune into their live stream. The FDA is doing a live stream meeting tomorrow with much more information on this. I'll cover the basics afterwards, but if you want all the nitty gritty details, check out their live stream. They're going to be debating the merits and how solid the testing and evidence is behind the vaccines. And I know a lot of you are really interested in that. So that's going to do it for today. I hope I have kept you informed and of course, have a profitable day.